I, I, I don't know how much time we have left, but I decided to start watching Bob Ross. Welcome to What's New. We have some lovely guests this evening, and I'm going to have Aris to introduce them because I have a problem with hearing, so I'm going to let her introduce our guests. Okay. I don't know who wants to talk first, but we have Serenity, and we also have... Harold's Harris. Energy Company. Right. So you can decide, introduce yourself. Okay. Whoever wants to first, it doesn't matter. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I'm Diane Weber. I'm a volunteer with Serenity Hospice Care, and Whitney Shumway is here with program that Serenity started when? So um, I'm a social worker with the Supportive Care Program at Serenity, and um, prior to it being called Supportive Care, it was known as Comfort Care for a few years. Uh, last fall, we were able to evaluate the program and make a few changes to really help the individuals that we're trying to help the best way that we possibly can. So here to talk about those changes. Okay. Uh, you're the charming one. You go first. <laughs> I that one. I did. <laughs> I'm Harold Gallagher. I'm a co-founder and co-owner of Harold's Famous Company, B Company. So, glad to be here. Yeah, it's a great business to be Thank in town. Thank you so right? much. Yeah. Yep. And I'm Amanda Hutchings, and I'm the other half of the uh, ownership and the queen bee, I guess, of the business. <laughs> um, you'll most likely see me at the storefront uh, there quite often. Uh, just trying to keep things running, organizing the event that we have coming up this Saturday. That's pretty much my sole responsibility for the last couple of months. So um, hopefully we knock it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so whoever wants to start talking about your okay. what you do and why you got interested <laughs> in your job and all that. Sure. So um, Anything you want to talk about? Well, I've been with Serenity now for a little over a year. I was very blessed to have the opportunity um, regarding my education to come to Serenity and fell in love with the work. Um, and within that opportunity, we were able to really look at supportive care, as I mentioned earlier, and it's a free program that Serenity offers to individuals that have chronic and life-threatening illnesses um, that maybe they're not hospice appropriate or maybe they are and they're just not emotionally ready for that yet and they need a little extra support. So that's what we're there for. Um, the program really consists of social work visits and nursing visits. So um, patients get to see myself once a month as well as my counterpart, Crystal. Um, and she is absolutely amazing at what she does. Uh, so visits are, like I said, monthly minimum. If patients are struggling, maybe they're having some health crises, we can come more often than that. Uh, so with her visits, she is able to do blood work and urinalysis from home. She's able to coordinate with patient primary care physicians um, to keep them up to date on what is going on with patients' overall health as well as symptoms as, it as it's contributed by their illnesses. Um, and, and just be able to help facilitate that conversation. Uh, we're able to help advocate for patients' changes in medications or maybe an antibiotic or something like that, um, if those are needed. And we've seen less doctor visits, less hospitalizations, um, and just an overall sense of confidence and dignity in making their own medical decisions. You know, so often individuals are given this this diagnosis that is completely life changing and altering, and where do we where do we go from here? How do we make these decisions? And it feels like we're forced into making a decision that we're not quite ready for. So with supportive care, we're able to kind of just put a stop to that, allow some time and help in processing. As a social worker, that's kind of what I do. I, su I supply that um, emotional support, those social supports. I bring resources to the table and really help process what's going on, what it is that our next steps look like. Crystal and I provide education around their, the patient diagnosis and what to expect as that progresses and moves forward. We're able to really help on the emotional on the emotional front of that, moving forward and, and being able to do so at their own pace and in their own time. Um, and so 
with that, when the time comes that hospice is appropriate, they're able to make that decision for themselves and they're able to uh, feel less uncertain about that. You know, there's that sense of confidence and they've been able to um, work on end of life planning with their families at this point because we bring families in and we say, okay, here are the different things we need to start looking at. What are your thoughts? Let's, let's have this conversation. We help facilitate that. And so when the time comes, it's a very easy transition. Um, as I said, it's very patient driven. So really it's what patients need in the moment. Uh, we have some who we do see a couple of times a month just because that's what they need. That's what they need to gain that confidence and to be well informed and, and working through what it is that they're going through. Um, I've got brochures here for you guys tonight as well that just kind of goes over some of that, some of those benefits um, and who's eligible. It is, like I said earlier, a free program, so we're not billing that burden is lifted. Um, the only thing that gets billed at any time would be lab work, and the lab would do that. Uh, so with it being you know, a free program, you don't have to worry about have you met your spend down. You don't have to worry about is this insurance going to cover you know, 25 or 75 percent? What, what does this look like? So that's all off the table. Um, and the other really helpful piece is there's not an age requirement for our program. Um, so if you have, maybe you have a child that's struggling with a chronic and life-threatening illness and you're just not quite sure where to go, you can give us a call and we can come out and we can help through that process. We can help navigate the medical world and um, help advocate and just be that support as you're, as you're working through that. So um, did you guys have any questions for me? I feel like maybe... I can give you one. Um, yeah. Sometimes people, when they come out of the hospital, have home health. Mm -hmm. And so how does this work in conjunction with the home health? Very good question. Because it's a free program, it does not interfere. So if you have home health, maybe you have physical therapy, occupational therapy, home care, it does not interfere with any of those programs at all. We are in conjunction to the care that is already being provided. And so we are really just another piece of the healthcare team in helping guide that team in the right direction for the patient. Um, and so, yeah, that's wonderful. Well, as I see it then, because um, I know from having been in the hospital and getting home health afterwards, they only come for a specific number of visits and then you're on your own. And sometimes even though you've met their criteria for being on your own, you still feel like you want some support. And I think supportive care would be very beneficial in that Absolutely. scenario, you know, that um, I know my mom at one point when she was seeing doctor after doctor and then all of a sudden there were no more doctor visit and she said, have I been abandoned? Don't they care mm. about me anymore? I mean, I got all this attention and now there's nothing. And I think with supportive care, we're saying, yeah, we still care about you and we're gonna help see you through, facilitate, like you said, through the ins and outs and the ups and downs, because it can be really hard to navigate. Mm -hmm. And I think as we get older, it seems much more complicated than when you're younger. And what am I supposed to do now? And a lot of times if a patient is experiencing a kind of a lull in that they have they've stabilized, right? So then a lot of those services do back out. They're, they still have that diagnosis, they still have those symptoms, mm -hmm. but they don't have that help. And so we're able to continue to stay in the home and be that help. Um, we do have a, kind of an outward look, outward goal of having patients on for between 12 to 18 months as they're going through that process. And if um, a patient needs to be discharged for one reason or another, um, maybe they feel like they're, they're good. We've helped them in every way that they feel like they've needed. Um, we can always come back. So just because they discharge doesn't mean that we won't come back and help again later. That's good so, to know. Yeah. yeah. So are most of the people that work, work first around at are they volunteers or? 
So Serenity is a hospice care company. Mm -hmm. So we do, that is our primary, our primary program is hospice. Okay. But on the other side of that, we have supportive care. Oh, okay, and so it's a different branch. It is, it's a okay. different program that, the organ, that we as an organization offer to the community. And, um, and so it's primarily myself and Crystal who go out and work with patients and see patients. And it's in their home. That's the other really important piece of this is they don't have to travel anywhere to get that help. And if getting out is a difficult thing for them, being able to go and help do televisits. Mm -hmm. I've helped many patients um, with COVID and um, you know, just the inability to get out of the home to facilitate those televisits so they're able to have that contact with their primary care physician. Whether they have the internet or not, I can bring that to them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been, a, that's been a great way to help some of our patients. Um, really, it, it is so patient-driven and flexible that we're able to meet people where they are. And if we can't provide a certain service, then we can we can advocate for what it is that they do need or make the referral for the appropriate resource. Getting back to what you were saying, um, Serenity uh, staff is paid, you know, but we also have volunteers oh, that okay. go out and visit um, the families, the patients, who's ever interested in having a volunteer can have them. We have a good core of volunteers in this community that have been with us years, I mean some up to 10 years and more, and uh, they just love what they do, and they bring uh, a sense of normalcy to the families, mm -hmm. you know, they can talk about things other than the illness, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on in town, what festival is happening mm -hmm. this weekend, and, and that type of thing, but. Uh, so no. they more or less visit. Right, and yes, that's, that's their sole company. purpose. Yeah. Yes, yes, totally, for the volunteers, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very impressive. We are very blessed to be able to be in a place to provide this service to the community. And Crystal and I feel very strongly about it. We're very, very um, enthusiastic and engaged with our patients. And they become family to us at Serenity. Our patients all become family to us. And, and so, um, you know, just to kind of recap what these visits and things look like and when it's appropriate to contact us, um, you know, if an individual is released from a nursing facility um, or a hospitalization that's been a long stay and they've been given one of these chronic and life-threatening illnesses, again, things such as cancer, COPD, emphysema, um, heart disease, congestive heart failure, any of those things, um, give us a call. We come out to the house and we do an evaluation with those individuals and see how we can help. Um, if an individual, maybe this is nothing new, maybe this is something that you've been struggling with for many years, but it's kind of come to a point that you need a little extra support, give us a call. Um, same thing if maybe, maybe it's a newer diagnosis, but you're receiving that chemo treatment or you're receiving those blood transfusions, um, but you still need that extra support. Again, call us at Serenity, let us come out and meet with you and see how we can help. Um, you know, nursing visits are all encompassing. It's not just the symptoms that come with that particular diagnosis, but overall health. And so physicians are able to stay up to date with, with patients and they've really given us a lot of feedback on how much they appreciate that. Um, and again, with social work visits, it's, it's really all encompassing and patient driven. So whatever those needs are, we can definitely find a way to try to meet those. Um, how big an area do you serve? We serve nine counties. Um, so we are in St. Francis County, St. Genevieve, Madison, Washington, Ironton, um, Perry counties, Reynolds, and parts of Jefferson wow. County as well. Wow, so, big area. Yeah, and that's for for hospice as well as supportive care. Um, so quite quite a good area here in Southeast mm -hmm. Missouri. So. Yeah. I just want to emphasize one thing because people all, you know, if they think of hospice, they think, well, I can't have any kind of aggressive care. But like you mentioned, somebody could be receiving 
chemo for their cancer and they can still get the supportive care, definitely. Yes, um, on supportive care. Or dialysis, anything yes. like that, because um, those are scary times and sometimes you get caught in staying in your own little box because this is all you can think about is my next treatment, my next treatment. And I think the social worker can help you say, okay, maybe we need to do an advanced directive. Have you thought about that? And you know, then you get the deer in the headlights look like, oh, well, I hadn't thought about that. Maybe I should. And so you've got somebody to help take the time with you in your own home to go over that information. Um, and I think that's one of the real positives that comes with the program. And that is a really good point too with our advanced directives and things that is part of the assessment so when we come in to speak with somebody and find out what's going on we are really looking at not just what your diagnosis is and how the nurse can help but what it is that you need resource wise and if there is a need for things like a durable power of attorney and a living will and things of that nature we're able to help do those and help go through all of that paperwork um, I, I have done everything from helping with end of life paperwork to funeral planning and um, the list kind of goes on and on, making those special memories with um, grandparents and their grandchildren or their great grandchildren, um, doing just those different activities and projects that those kiddos can have with them for a lifetime and helping create those special moments for the whole family, so. Great service. <laughs> That's a lot. It, it, it sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> well, and it's unique to every family, to every individual, yeah. so it's not like, okay, here's what we can do, A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are your needs? That's what we're going to go with, and that's what makes it so powerful for, you know, the families, so. Mm -hmm. And really when patients come in on supportive care, as they make that transition through their hospice journey, you know, we, we continue to be there from start to finish for patients and their families. That includes those grandbabies and, and things that just don't understand why grandma or grandpa are gone. They don't understand why grandma and grandpa can't go outside and play anymore. And so we're able to help them process as well kind of what's happening. Um, and, and so to follow that up, we also offer Carter's Clubhouse, which is a grief support group for children. And so um, we meet the first Monday of every month from 6.30 to 8. We feed the kiddos dinner at 6.30 and at 7 we start activities and group discussion. And it's a place where they can come and they can be with other children that are really just trying to navigate this idea of loss and what that means and what that looks like. Um, and so it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to be involved with. It's a beautiful time to, to watch the children kind of grow and talk and be there and be that support for one another. It's a great group for facilitating that. Um, we actually have a day camp coming up July 23rd for the kids and they can uh, just reach out to Serenity and, and we can get them that information on how to register for that. It's another free service that we provide um, and day camp will be free as well. So are there age, what age groups? Yeah, yeah. so uh, for Carter's Clubhouse, we, we meet the needs for ages four to 18. For day camp, we've really focused on ages seven to 16. Um, and then it'll be a whole day of breakfast and lunch and snacks and activities and um, some of those will of course be helping to process their grief and their loss while some of those will also be just a fun time to be a kid <laughs> with other kids that are going through the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we're really looking forward to that as well. Yeah. That's great. And where is the camp? Where do you hold the camp? So the day camp is being held at Serenity's office in Park Hills. In Park Hills. Yes. And um, we have plenty of space to be able to do indoor activities and things there um, throughout the heat of the day and have some outdoor activities in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. It is very impressive. How do you you question? I like that word. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good as Norman Rockwell, though. <laughs> Please tell us about the bees. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, 
Well, uh, specifically the bees or the honey festival? Well, we can talk about bees all day. You can talk about bees and you can talk about the honey festival. Uh, well, I just did a cutout of honeybees that have been in the old uh, Kaufman General Store for about 40 years. Oh, wow. Um, got about 30 stings out of it, so that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just like... That's the Comes place you had posted yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. And tore that. It was... It, um, it was far more than what I was expecting. <laughs> Put in a little over. The my interesting head. thing, she fit, said she'd found 30 queens. Queens don't like to live near other queens. Right. They kill each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was stunned when she said that. So obviously, they've divided that building mm -hmm. into separate hives. Sure. Separate colonies. Oh my right. God. And so a queen, and apparently you said it was probably between the wall studs. Between each joint. Divided that way. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And it's just amazing. I was going to ask you how they entered. Did they have there a low are, entry? Or? Yeah, they had a low entry, multiple entry points. But I found 10 queens, but there were 10 yeah. different spaces. And so I think the queen, the major, the head queen, <laughs> um, like sh her pheromones wouldn't reach throughout the entire hive, the mm -hmm. entire colony. So she allowed other queens yeah. to remain. On occasion, yeah. a very old queen will allow a young queen to be in that colony with her. But that's rare. So oh, it's, it's a very... Very it, exclusive it, club. It, sure. <laughs> right. It was quite the anomaly, and yeah. so I can just add that one to my resume. It's pretty yeah. cool. So were they scattered <laughs> through the building? I mean, uh, different the, places are kind of concentrated. The exterior back quarter of the Just wall. the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was really fascinating. They had, there were some... Uh, genetics in there that I don't know that we've seen in a, a very long time here in the U.S. Were they aggressive? Very aggressive. Black black honeybees. They just don't like British. Them. Yeah, yeah, like British strains that are mostly um, gone. Mm -hmm. So that was wow. the whole thing was just very interesting. So the thirty stings made up for it, I guess. <laughs> hey, for you? Was wondering. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> if woo, you had beeswax also. We do. Well, that was in my head. I thought I'd ask. We sure do. But I don't remember who asked. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to make candles. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have a lot of raw, unfiltered beeswax that I will happily give away. It's just mounting up. But um, we do sell purified beeswax if they want the clean stuff and not have to filter it as well. So okay. yeah. we can help. It's been said that everything that comes out of a beehive is good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's helpful in some way. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as this honey festival goes, uh, this Saturday, um, 10 to 6, so we've got eight hours of festival time. Uh, we've hired the trolley. We've completely paid for the trolley so that guests from out of town can experience and enjoy that. Um, they'll need to uh, park at Eric Scott Leathers um, up at 980 Rozier and just hop on the trolley. They'll make constant loops all day. So once you're done at the festival, you can just uh, get back on the trolley and they'll take you back to your vehicle. So, but we have a full day of um, beekeeping presentations. We've even got Harold's mentor uh, yeah. offering a, a bee beard. The guy that got me involved <laughs> in beekeeping many years ago, uh, he's now the secretary of the state association of beekeepers, but uh, he's going to do a bee beard where they gather on it. And uh, his secret is he'll attach a queen in a, in a cage to his lower lip. To his chin. To his chin. And of course the bees gather around that queen. And so, so this is like a super advanced beekeeper just showing off, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So they good. don't sting then. Well, they, uh, they can. Oh, they do. They can. When they are. You don't start swatting them. You don't. Well, no. and there's a whole science to it. Apparently, um, he has a separate hive that he watches and can count the days of the brood, so he knows when they're about to emerge. And so you use bees that just newly emerged from their cells. Um, and so they really don't know how to do anything yet, including sting. So it's mm -hmm. the smartest oh. way to handle that. So. This guy is very good at it. And if you go to his house, there's colonies everywhere. Oh my <laughs> He's got hives. He lives in the middle of a big field, but that field's full of colonies. It's hmm. amazing. And so far, how far do bees have to be apart, or does it? The colonies? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can put them right next to each other. Oh, really? It's yeah. really fascinating. They will mark their spot, sort of like a GPS marker. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see them doing their um, uh, their um, 
orientation flight. So they'll emerge from their cells, newbies, and they'll do a figure eight in front of the in front of their hive, their home. Oh and so God. they're marking their territory in which box is theirs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? And the foragers will go out and they'll find a field full of flowers somewhere. They'll come back and do a dance on the front of the hive and tell and in that dance it tells the other bees the direction and the distance those flowers are. Oh my and there may be another dance going on over here, so the bees, okay, I think I'll go to that one. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, there might be two or three dances going on. <laughs> and so they'll pick out which one they want to go to. And there Isn't they go. That and that can be within a two mile range. So. They're in a, within a two mile range. Two mile, that's their typical flight distance. Oh my gosh. Yeah, if they have a good nectar source nearby, it's they're they're pretty smart. It's work smarter, not harder kind of situation. So if they have a really good crop nearby, they won't need to fly that far. But no. sometimes they have to. That's the outside range of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long do they live? Well, the queen can live up to about six years, mm -hmm. but the the buzz bees, the worker bees, mm -hmm. they drill only a few months at most. Mm -hmm. How long? A few months. Oh my. They, goodness. you know, their bees, their wings are. I say glossomer, it's a see-through right. tissue, mm. and they actually beat those to death. Oh my and they'll be able to fly out and fill up with nectar, but they can't carry the extra weight back. Mm. And so they'll land out there somewhere and not they survive. Carry, do they cover a majority of their body with them? Well, they have pockets on their legs. You, oh, they you'll see pictures of them oh. in a hive, and their legs might be orange, yeah. full oh of gosh. nectar, or whatever color of nectar oh. they're gathering. Yeah. Well, and whatever their color they're gathering, that'll be the color of that leg in it. Oh there. my goodness. And they'll go back in and they'll uh, discard that and go make another load. I mean, I thought it was kind of on their heads and their backs and that, no. Well, I'm sure there is some, because they're going into that flower, I'm sure there is some, but they have a place to carry it. Yeah. Oh. So they, the, the, their back legs are called pollen pants. <laughs> <laughs> and so their whole kind body- Kind of like their cargo pants. Right, yeah, <laughs> the pollen pants. Um, but their whole bodies are covered in these little tiny hairs. So they will actually fly into the flower and do a little dance, shake their body in the flower, and it shakes the pollen sure. all over, including their eyes. So they're, I mean, they, they work in the most efficient way. Um, so their goal is just to get the most pollen back to their hive in one trip as possible. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, they were created with such purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The creative little creatures. They're geniuses, yeah. They okay, are. so how do they get the pollen off of their body? And I think the others chew it off. Yeah, the others, <laughs> <Or dancing>. yeah. <laughs> Another day, I they twerk. <laughs> and a bee's life cycle, um, as soon as they're hatched or come out of the egg, they go through a, what are the uh, cycles of that? They, they stay in the, nurse, or in the nursery area mm -hmm. and help those other bees cycle. Then they wind up and they eventually go out as forager bees. Right. Now, all but a very few bees are female in the hive. Uh, there's a few drones, and the drones are the only ones that don't have a stinger. Hmm. They're a great big body, great big eyes, bug eyes, and they have one purpose in life, and that's it. And in the winter time, when there's no food and the food's getting short, they kick them out. They, they don't need them anymore. <laughs> we so can't support you guys. It, it's, a, it's a hazardous lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy, you're not needed. Out you go. Oh, dear. So they're oh, very drums. interesting little characters. Very you know, much so. Mm -hmm. I love just to open a hive and just watch the behavior. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you forget to throw in a frame, so my, I have 10 frame boxes basically. Um, and if I get busy and only have nine frames in the box, and the next time I open it, I, you'll see something called a festoon. And it's where they've locked arms and legs and they've use their bodies as a measuring device to figure out how much space they need to fill with honeycomb. Oh mm. my gosh. Called bee space. Yeah, bee space. About three-eighths of an inch, I think, mm -hmm. max. Yeah, something yep. like that. Anything more than that, they have to fill. Like, it's just their natural duty uh, to fill that space with honeycomb. Now, in the wintertime, <laughs> they'll put the queen in the center of the hive, and then the bees will cluster around her. And so it's nice and warm on the inside. They want to go about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, then as you go out in this ball, it gets colder and colder. 
because you're out close to the wintertime weather. Mm -hmm. So those bees cycle through that, and on the outside they'll eat, they'll gather honey out of it to get some energy, then they'll go back toward the middle and take enough to feed the queen while they're in there, and then, then it's just a revolving cycle to maintain that temperature. Amazing. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. The and dumb little creatures in the world, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should be so smart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah, we'll have, um, I think we have nine different beekeepers offering demonstrations that day or uh, presentations. One of our beekeepers is doing um, a honey extraction so the kids can, they can crank the honey extractor and see how that works and sample some fresh honey and just kind of see the process. And, um, it's mostly base, you know, entry level information. Uh, a lot of people are interested in beekeeping. Um, so it's nice to get a little bit of information before you dive in head first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trial by fire. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on. We have um, two concerts, two free concerts that day. Uh, the first one is uh, Route 67. Um, they're from Farmington. Um, they start at noon. They'll play from noon to 3. And then Max T. Barnes is coming up from Nashville. Um, we were lucky to get him this year. So he has written um, numerous number one songs for Vince Gill and uh, Garth Brooks and Conway oh, Twitty and like if you're a country music lover like you will adore him um, But yeah, uh, he'll take the stage at 4 and then play to 530 um, And then this year the stage will actually be across the street from our store um, And uh, we've named it the hives for heroes stage. So I recently started mentoring um, for a veterans organization that teaches beekeeping to veterans um, who are looking for a healthy transition from service, basically. It's a non-for-profit. Um, their, uh, their organization is based in Texas, and so they're actually coming up from Texas to be um, at our festival, which is really spe uh, really special. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Interesting. That's awesome. Where is all this going to be held at? Uh, so on Market Street, we'll, we will have Market Street packed uh, all the way from Third down to South Main, and then we'll uh, we'll have several vendors at uh, on the Bull Duke Garden Gardens property, um, and then again uh, the parking lot across from our storefront. So you still have your store there. Oh yeah, two thirty four market. <laughs> That's two three four. <laughs> what time do you open on Sundays? We're closed on Sunday. You're not open on Sunday. No. Yeah, we're open Tuesday through Saturday. Um, right now, so that seems to work out well for us, and um, hopefully, uh, at some point we may change that. But right now, it works out well for us. <laughs> So you're open from Saturday, from Tuesday to Saturday. Tuesday to Saturdays. Mm -hmm. So come down and get some ice cream. <laughs> I like the uh, yeah. Sav too, though. Yeah, the bee cream. In the little black tin. Yep, that's where it all started. <laughs> yes, I know. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else about the festival do we want to talk about? Um, so we'll have a mead garden, which is honey wine. Um, so mead is the oldest form of alcohol uh, that the Vikings used to drink <laughs> 2,000 oh years ago. Um, so four brothers, uh, they're a veteran company um, from Festus. They'll be set up in the Bull Duke Gardens. Um, they'll have a, a mead garden. Um, they'll do some mead slushies and different things like that, try to keep some people cool. but. Um, uh, and then we're ha also having the Hive Art Painting Contest. So we uh, posted about a week, ago, well, probably two weeks ago, that um, basically we're having this contest, pick up a hive box and just paint whatever you would like onto it. And then we, uh, we'll have a contest. Um, we'll let the, the visitors vote. One penny equals one vote. And all of that money will go to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which um, supports a little girl in our uh, area that has CF. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a full day. Yeah, yeah it's a very full day, yeah. <laughs> so what got you interested in bees to begin with? Well, this guy got me interested in bees because at, f at first we were very interested in bee venom. 
and I'm a chemistry nerd, and so that's how he came to me. <laughs> I'm a cancer survivor, and uh, during the uh, chemotherapy, I got very nauseous. Prayed about it, and God said, go sting yourself. And I was already a beekeeper, and I knew about apitherapy. API, API is a honeybee, and therapy, of course, is that, and they had known for years that uh, stinging yourself relieves arthritic pain. Mm -hmm. But I'm the first one in the literature that, because God told me how to do this, equated apitherapy to nausea relief, uh -huh. not pain relief. And so you can't travel with a bucket of bees, <laughs> and you can't open a hive in the wintertime, and so it's hard to get the sting every time you needed it. Mm -hmm. So I called her one day and I said, you know about apitherapy? Yes. I said, have you ever thought about transdermal? That was her sweet spot right there. Mm -hmm. She loved transdermal work. So she, at first we purchased this material to do it, but then she developed non-chemical, I call it, ways to do this and get it transdermally trans, uh, into the skin, mm -hmm. into the body. And so now we've patented that process and uh, it's going well, it's doing well. Fantastic, yeah, but that's that's where it started. Yeah. Everything else is just a nice little bonus for us. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we were wondering where you put the, the cream, you know, the bee sting was usually on your arm. So we read up about it and the ankle was a pretty good place to put it. Mm. Wow. So we just smear it on the ankle. Yeah, acupressure, acupuncture, right. acupressure. That's one of the sites. The feet apparently are pretty heavy in that. Excuse me. So that's where we did it and it worked. And yeah. uh, I've blown through my chemo very well since then. So I've never had any nausea at all since that time. Yeah. So. Well, and it was just by happy accident that, I mean, th this was made initially just for Harold, like just for, you know, just for him, but he shared it with everyone and their brother, yeah. and um, they used it for everything, and so we figured out by happy accident that it really worked for a lot of things, and so um, we can't market it, obviously, for yeah, we're the not, purpose that it was created. We're not licensed to say medical. We can't right. do that. Right. Yeah, we, it's so we can do cosmetics, and I say, well, you're, you look better when you've been over double and pain. <laughs> so, Very true. That's the way I equate that to cosmetics. That's you know? right. Yes. But interestingly, when we were first developing the formula, mm -hmm. we had no idea how much venom to put in this cream. So to test it, she would mix up a 30X and a 40X, and that's how we marked it. So she'd give it to me, and I live outside of Farmington. So I'd drive and park over just outside the ER room in the hospital, take a book with me, call her up, say, okay, I'm about ready to put this on. I'd put it on, read four or five chapters, say, well, I'm doing pretty good. She said, okay, you're done, go home. And I, you know, every now and then the security guard at the hospital would come check up on me. And I'd say, hi buddy, I'm doing fine, how are you today? So that's how we tested this thing, to, you know, let's find the safe levels of it. Sure. And we never did find an unsafe level. We haven't. No, anyway. No, so whatever, uh, the specific way that we dry the venom, it actually removes the phospholipase, which is the chemical that people who are allergic to bee stings, like mm -hmm. that's the chemical that they're allergic uh -huh. to. Um, but we can't market that because there could be like the 0.2% yeah. chance that they could be allergic to melatonin or one of the other proteins. Mm -hmm. Bee venom is, consists of 55% solids and 45% mm -hmm. liquids. Those liquids are the proteins and the peptides. And that's what we think carries all of the uh, shock properties right. of that. Reaction. So we dry that out and use only the powder. Okay. Now, in doing this, it's the powder is, winds up on a glass plate and I'm sitting there with a razor blade <laughs> scraping his white powder. <laughs> so I take a picture of that, take it to our sheriff, <laughs> and say, now Dan, here's what I'm doing. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, we've, we've done some things that sound weird, but it worked. <laughs> and it was all legal, so. Good to know, yeah. 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 That's good. Oh my. And so what did the sheriff say to that? Oh, he knows me. He seems oh. prepared for me. Uh, <laughs> He's well aware. Here comes Harold. <laughs> Harold has another idea. Yeah, I, I built a still one time for car tires. And so I was distilling car tires because there's about a gallon of fuel in each car tire. Oh, really? Yeah. 
it's not economically feasible to get it out, but I was wanting to know how to do that. So I took a picture of my still and took it to Dan. <laughs> showing what I was doing again. So, <laughs> so you just in, reinvent all the old stuff. I'm an old engineer, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna have you talk about the chicken plucker, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we raised, my wife and I raised uh, meat chickens. Well, the hard part of butchering a meat chicken is getting the feathers off. So I built a plucker. <laughs> you built a plucker. A chicken plucker, yeah. <laughs> you have to be careful when you say that. <laughs> so, and it works fine. It, you did a great job. Did Chickens go in fully clothed and come out naked. <laughs> <laughs> did you dip them in water? That, uh, that good smell. Perfumy yeah. scent, yes. <laughs> We've really deviated, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what all kind of booths are you gonna have? Uh, so yeah, we have a lot of, well, a lot of really interesting um, vendors. So Plant Joy Company, they have a little Volkswagen bug and it's uh, just a little traveling uh, forest, basically. And so I think they might be doing um, flower wreaths for kids that day and uh, just fresh uh, bouquets that you can like pick the stems that you want and they'll put them together and uh, oh. That kind of thing. Uh, we've got obviously several beekeepers. Um, we've got some, um, uh, a couple of vendors that are selling different plants, uh, succulents, that kind of thing. Um, we've got some clothing, just everything in between. Um, just some a really good. Uh, a really good group of people that we have. Um, Forever Sue Baking is really interesting to me. So if you, she's from uh, Jefferson County, and if you go to her website or her Facebook page, some of the desserts on her page um, looks to die for. <laughs> mm. So I may visit her first. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just a lot of um, like homeware. Uh, we were very selective. We, we like um, to have, you know, uh, vendors that are offering uh, items that fit with the theme, obviously. So things that are honeybee or garden or you know pollination and that sort of thing. So. I don't think she's I been busy. I, I've been. Busy. I bet. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Sounds like it. Yeah. So did you put out a call for them, or how did you well, get we them, or the did you know our, about them? Yeah, we got the majority of our vendors last year, and the, the remaining vendors was a word of mouth from last year's vendors, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> because they were so excited that they had sold out so quickly, and they were mm -hmm. shocked at the amount of people that showed up for a first year event. So, um, like I said, we had about 4,000 people last year. Yeah. Um, and my goal is about seven or eight, but I, I'm not sure exactly where we will land. I, I, I think I may have opened the throttle a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, What time do you start? Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. 10? Oh, 10 to 6. 10 to 6, okay. yep. Got that. Uh, also, the Linden House uh, will be doing a lot of different kids' events oh, uh, okay. that's be related. So they'll be throwing tomahawks. I know they have tomahawk throws on Saturdays, uh, but this Saturday they'll they'll let the kids throw tomahawks at hive beetles, which I find very entertaining. Throw them at what? Hive beetles, which is a a, a, a pesk <laughs> inside of the hive, basically. Um, no, they're tiny. Those are, but. Uh yeah, they will. Yeah, they inundate a hive and can really decimate a hive. So it's it's it'll be fun just to see them torture, you know, the hive beetles. <laughs> <laughs> You've done well. Well, thank you. Like I'm sure I've missed something. Where there's there's so much. Well, you got to come and find out what you missed. I that's true. Yeah, yeah. Sure. show up and you'll find it out, and then we can blame you. <laughs> <laughs> that works. So what's the total of vendors that you have? Uh, we have 45 vendors total. Oh, well, that's good, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Wow. Quite a variety, too. So you'll probably yes. be on both sides of the street then, right? Well, we're required to keep one side open just in oh. case emergency vehicles have to oh. get through. Um, but we have it, we've measured and measured again just to make sure that we could fit everyone properly and give enough space oh, for okay. people to walk. So. Um, they'll actually all be on the side of our where our storefront is. Um, okay. That's where the power poles are at and that kind of thing. It's forecast to be a partly cloudy, non-rainy day. Be on the warm side, yeah. but uh, no, no rain thing. forecast. That's a good that's, thing. 
wonderful. Uh, also, um, the Holy Cross Lutheran Church next to us, they're offering a cooling station. Oh, that's uh, good. Which that's they great. did last year, and it, it was a huge hit. They're doing kids' events there. They're talking about uh, the Beatitudes. <laughs> and, and so different I, spelling. Yeah, uh -huh. I had to giggle at Pastor Craig whenever he told me about that, but we're excited. They're wonderful neighbors. Um, uh, so a cooling station, they can, you know, you can go in and eat there if you'd like. Um, or just cool down, just take some time. Um, if you're a, a mother that's breastfeeding, that's also available to you. So um, they're pretty great. Oh, oh there's a question. We got a phone call. Yeah, okay. Hello, welcome. Let me find the um, uh, where you where we can hear you. Okay, now. Is this Iris? Yes, this is Iris, and this is Robbie, right? This is Robbie. Okay, so what's up? So, I'm there to elaborate a little bit more about the need God. Need. They want you to elaborate oh. elaborate on the mead. Okay, sure. So, yeah, like I said, the mead, uh, mead is the oldest form of alcohol that we know about. Uh, at the most basic level, it's honey, water, and yeast. Um, but, of course, uh, it's evolved over the last thousand of years. Um, in the old days, they would throw tree bark or herbs and spices, whatever they could find, they would throw into the mixture and who knows what that tasted like. So um, it's definitely been modernized over the years. Um, but yeah, there's uh, ranges in ABV from about 14% alcohol to about 22% alcohol. Wow. So it doesn't take too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Four Brothers will be there. Like I said, they're a veteran-owned company, so we like to support everything that they do. Um, since we have our veterans coming up from Texas, I thought it would be a good fit. Now, were these Four Brothers there those few thousand years ago when this was? <laughs> well, they friend? they dress up as Vikings and okay. pretend to be. <laughs> and they know how it was done originally. Then they do. Pretty open. <laughs> See how much you can learn here? I tell you, yes. Yeah. Right. Got any other questions, Robbie? <laughs> yes, what time do the bands play? What time do the bands sure. play? So Route 67 takes the Hives for Heroes stage at noon, and they play until 3. Uh, and then um, our headliner, Max T. Barnes, um, takes the stage at 4, and will play until 5.30. And where are these stages? Uh, the stage is directly across the street from our storefront. Actually, you'll see the stage go on up the tomorrow lot. on the oh, parking lot. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Good. More? Right. Yeah, he's. He said it sounded wonderful. He can't wait to come out. He can't oh, wait well, to come out. Thank you, Robbie. Well, we're anxious to present it again. Yeah. Now you can be our Pat. Oh. He hung up. She got busy. <laughs> he gave her a word. She got busy. <laughs> he can be our Pat and call us every week like Pat. Uh, yeah. What was her last name? Remember Pat? What was her last name? Living in the big house. She lived in this brick house across the oh. Anyway, Pat <laughs> and she went down the every head. time we were on air. So she we went. had a caller every time we were on air for as long as she lives. Oh, Bless her heart. Bless her heart. heart. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's nice to be curious about different things. So yeah, we missed stuff. Her. We've missed yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. for sure, we've missed things. We deviated a long time we ago. Did. What did you say? <laughs> I <Yeah>. did. <laughs> Well, you gave a lot of really good information. Yeah, well, I am just passionately curious about bees, and so I get very nerdy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been to your store, so tell me about the variety of things that you have at your store. Yeah, so we actually have a honey bar and a mead bar. Wait a minute, are we speaking to her? She hadn't been in our store. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. Okay, okay. You've been well, this time you can. You'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> 
he will allow it, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a honey bar uh, and a mead bar. So we, uh, in addition to our local honey, uh, we work with about 10 different beekeepers across the country. Um, I even got to go to Hawaii last year and do some, mm. get some beekeeping there. And so every once in a while we have Hawaiian honey on the bar. Okay. Um, so it's just rare honeys that you typically wouldn't get unless you visited those areas. And so we're very specific about who we work with and we know because Honey is one of those things that you just, you need to know where it came from. Mm -hmm. And there'll be eight or 10 samples of honey out on the bar at one time of increasing color darkness. And so that depends on where, what's in, what was the, the pollen they were collecting. At the, we don't add anything to any honey. That's the way it came into us. Right. So everything is natural there. Everything in our store is related to the honeybee in some manner. Mm -hmm. I got the shirt today. I, I noticed that. Yeah. Yes. But uh, you know, it's just uh, everything there is honey bee, honey bee related pollinators. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we offer free honey tastings. Um, typically, eight to ten different honeys on the bar. So if you don't leave sweet, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do offer the mead tastings too. Um, uh, we don't have our own mead. We, yeah. uh, my husband makes his own mead, but we don't have a commercial production for that or anything. And so we just uh, rotate different meads that are made in Missouri. To promote the local honeybee keeper, beekeeper, uh, we sell local honey there, mm -hmm. and all of those proceeds go to that honey, that honey supplier. Mm -hmm. We don't profit from that at all. Mm -hmm. We want people to know that there are local people here that are providing this service, pollinating, pollinating service, mm -hmm. or, uh, and uh, so we uh, we want that to be promoted, mm -hmm. and so we help those people in that manner. And then they can go buy from that source later if they wish, right. and sure. circumvent us entirely. That's that's right. fine with us. Yeah. But we want to promote that beekeeper. Sure. Well, yeah. So. Um on a weekly basis, we'll showcase, we'll do a, a beekeeper of the week and showcase their honey on our on our honey bar next to our honey. And we'll do it free of charge. Anything that they sell, we'll give them 100% of that back. And it really creates um, just a, uh, just a relationship with our fellow beekeepers because sure. there's so much that we can learn from each other. Yeah. And um, that camaraderie. Our purpose is not to compete with them. Right. But to compliment them. Support and encourage. Yeah. Yeah. So can you actually taste the difference in different honeys? Mm. Can you really? Yes, oh, absolutely. Nice. I've never done a honey. There's bar, uh, so a, a very light know. honey, a very heavy honey. Oh, for sure. Dark honey, and yeah, it's very much. A sage has a different flavor to yeah, it. Yeah, so that probably the, the, the lightest would be like a star thistle. That one comes from Michigan. Um, it's almost clear. Uh, it's really light. Um, it's called sunshine in a jar is kind of what we call it. Um, super light. Um, has a little hint of like a, a mint to it. Mm -hmm. And that's from the plant, um, which is an invasive species in Michigan. But So even though the plant is really annoying, uh, mm -hmm. it, has a, it has a good purpose, I guess. Um, and then on the very end of that spectrum is like buckwheat honey and we call that the Guinness of honey it's almost black oh and it gosh. tastes almost like sorghum mm -hmm. uh, or Very molasses mm -hmm. um, oh, really? yeah, yeah. Oh my. and you go through this list of say 10 different honeys and taste them and then you turn around and you buy that same one back here yeah. so you, know, you can taste what you choose what you want mm -hmm. and then you take it home with you. Yeah. Oh, for The only problem yeah. with that is I had a terrible time trying to decide which one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are return trips allowed. <laughs> and they were also good. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they rotate according to so the beekeepers that we work with, the agriculture fluctuates all you know, all year mm -hmm. in these different areas of the country. So um, it's always changing. The honeys that are on the bars constantly they're, rotating just they're according to harvest season. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You call it par pollinating um, or harvest? Harvest season. So whenever the honey is harvested, okay. um, whatever the crop was that. Okay. Yeah. Honey is separated by central centrifugal force, by the way, and just to throw that out. Separated by what? Centrifugal force. You put it in a spinner. Oh. Put the, the frames in a spinner, turn it, and a slow crank it really is magnified with the gearing, and that honey really spins in there inside this round stainless steel container. It drains to the bottom. you got a gate on the bottom. You pour that in your, in your uh, jar. You can filter it or non-filter either way. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Interesting. It is. It's fascinating. Very interesting. Yeah. 
Maybe you should tell them how we extract bee venom. Okay. Uh, when a bee stings you, a honeybee is the only in stinging insect with a barbed stinger. So when that barb goes in your skin, it doesn't come out. So the honeybee literally pulls herself apart to get away from you. Oh my so she'll gosh. fly over there somewhere and die in several minutes. Uh, so she's allowed one sting in her lifetime. Now, to get the venom, we didn't want to kill the bee and didn't want it to go through me and all that. So we put a glass plate in front of the landing board where the bees go into the hive. And then across the top of that, you stretch some very fine wires. And these wires are alternately electrically charged with two double, uh, AA batteries. I mean, extremely low voltage, enough to anger her but not to harm her. So she lands on this, what was that? Bing, she stings it. Well, she stings that glass plate, and the barbed stinger does not go into the glass plate. Mm. So she just deposits that venom onto the top of that glass plate. Well, at the same time, she puts out this pheromone, and she's got 20,000 good friends inside. Come out here and help me sting this thing. So all of her best friends come out, pile up. I'm standing over there, suited up with my smoker going, and wait about 15 minutes. Just let them sting their heart out, not their stingers out, not their life out, but just get get it out of their system, and then I'll come over and smoke them off. And all the bees fly away, they're not harmed. And I take this glass plate, you have to go inside. Because once it's dry, that's, that light fluffy powder, you lose it. Mm. So I go inside and do the drying process. And then I take the razor blade, scrape it off, and take my picture for the syrup. And, uh, <laughs> and then that, that is what we save, it's called melatonin. Melatonin. And uh, so we save that product. And uh, since she'll mix it with her non-chemical, uh, material that's transdermal and she'll mix it with that and blend it very well and that's our bee cream and uh, then you take that and put it on and speaking non-medically mm -hmm. if I get the start of a headache I put it where it hurts and it goes away mm -hmm. you know, uh, talking to how non-medical can we be here uh, <laughs> talking to Dan Bullock our sheriff his wife puts it on any fever blister she has. It goes away instantly. Uh, my daughter's use it on a burn. If they burn themselves, she's a, a cosmetologist, so she's always doing something to harm her burn herself. Pain goes away instantly, no blistering. These are non-medical statements I'm making, That's right. but they're cosmetic only. But uh, you know, it's we found a wide variety of things. Is uh, it you just do have that salve? That's what we're talking yeah, about. That's what I thought you well, were talking Harold about. Famous because cream. I love that. Yeah. Well, that just well, <laughs> that is good for everything. You, you, don't, <laughs> you don't need to just let her go. Yeah, right. her go. I, uh, a cousin's wife uh, was having plantar fasciitis, foot pain. Mm -hmm. So she asked me if that helped. I said, I don't know. Just smear it on the bottom of your foot when you go to bed and find out. I made her church, and so the next Sunday she came in. And she said, You don't understand. <laughs> Okay. She said, you don't understand. What? She said, I, she said, I put it on my bottom of my foot for the plantar fasciitis, but I haven't had a hot flash since then. She said, I was regular. I could schedule them. And she said, I haven't had a hot flash since then. I said, how's your plantar fasciitis? She said, here's. <laughs> so, had another friend that had a serious toothache, a uh, male mechanic. And weekend, he couldn't get to his dentist, and he mm -hmm. had face cream or the B cream. He said, I finally smeared some of it in my mouth. And I, mm -hmm. He said, it went away. And I said, how it tastes? He said, who cares? So, <laughs> we do not recommend that, by the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> but these are examples of how we learn things. Sure. And so it's just. It's, it's good for everything. <laughs> I've had bumps and I've had scrapes, and man, I just put one time on. That's it. That's great. That's I have really another cool. story. I had a secretary that uh, she was uh, uh, putting it on her arms so that she had some kind of a rash or something. And she, uh, she was an elderly lady. And she came in one day and she said, I think I've overdosed. She said, my arms are blood red. And I said, we've never heard of any kind of overdose. I don't know what this is all about. Well, she got to researching and she was feeling so, so much better 
that she was mowing her yard and her heart pill said don't get in the sunshine. So she was overdosing herself with sunshine, <laughs> turning blood red because she felt so much better. So I don't know if we should take blame for that or not. <laughs> I think I want it by the gallon. <laughs> We've had people ask if they could take a bath in it. I was just, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I was wanted by uh, a share in the company. So. <laughs> So, well, as far as that product goes, we're at about, I guess, 100 retailers plus Amazon, mm -hmm. as far as that goes. So that's really grown, evolved from I'd say. Yeah. the early days. So uh, does that really work on your feet, kind of like, maybe? I don't know, but your hot flash is over with. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it does. I always just say, put it where it hurts. Um, and so, you know. To make you look better. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, when you can walk straight, you look better. So that's about right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, uh, totally around. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's wonderful. Okay. We're happy. Some good I bet. Stuff. We're happy. I bet. Yeah. Get that's all these right. good responses mm -hmm. from people. Oh that, gosh. Mm -hmm. yeah, people are constantly coming up. Well, you solved my problem. Okay. I had a. We had a customer. Harold wasn't at the store that day, but. Um, this customer had been buying religiously on Amazon for years, and they were on their way from, uh, I think it was Utah, and they were going to the East Coast, and they went hours out of their way to come to the store and just, like, thank us. Um, <laughs> this is, like, ama this is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Isn't that sound? <laughs> and it, it's nice to see that face to the name that you're shipping mm -hmm. to all the time, so it's, get the story. And we really don't know why bee venom solves these issues. 4,000 years ago, by accident, some, somebody, somebody decided that, or learned that a bee sting took away his arthritis pain. Mm -hmm. And we still don't know why. Right. I don't know if they know why aspirin works. But, uh, you know, it's time and time is getting proven, so. Hmm. Sounds good. It's amazing, the natural. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some of the natural things. God's good. Yeah. Yeah, God is good. Very good. Yep. And I still like your presentation, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next time you know she's going to have the bee bone. And your purse going, what hurts? <laughs> Sadly, I was thinking of my mother-in-law. <laughs> Now, is that a good she's thing or a bad thing? Or, yeah. She's always uh, looking for something new to kind of help with some of those little aches and pains and wrinkles and things. And so I was like, that's what I was sitting here thinking about was. Mm -hmm. Put it where it hurts. Yeah. That's right. And even where it's dry, too, like your heels. Mm -hmm. I use it there. Oh. On my yeah. heels. Yeah. They like to peel for some reason. Well, it could be that you I'm feel so good about driving to St. Genevieve that that solved most of your problem. <laughs> that then the be. big cream just helped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That could be. Yeah, that's part of the deal. <laughs> It's some good stuff, I know. Honey's good. <laughs> so is that sass. <laughs> Everything from the hive is good for you in some way. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to find all the herbs to keep those mosquitoes away. Oh. Garlic. Well, it? there's so many of them. I, I bet know. they list, I found a list with like five or six of them. Yeah. That you just can put in pots and grow and the mosquitoes won't come around. I'm glad I can't amazing. go outside. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I can't recommend big cream for that because you'd probably solve the, you'd probably solve the arthritis of the, of the uh, mosquito and then he'd get more vigorous. Right, not duplicate. Yeah. Probably improve his health. Yeah. Yeah. We see this mess. Yeah. Or he's cosmetic. He's cosmetic. <laughs> Oh, dear. Especially those big river ones, the big black ones. Oh, black black ones. Yeah. Yeah. The state bird. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like they come the end of the summer. You see all the black mosquitoes. It just seems like they're down at Casky now. I, oh, oh, oh. I hate those things. Yeah. Okay. That breed ought to go somewhere. Else. Had <laughs> 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 them off the shotgun at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Hot little pea shooter. Yeah. So that's this weekend. Uh, yes. Uh, 10 to 6. 10 to 6 on Saturday. Um, 
So yeah, we, uh, we'd love to see all the downtown businesses have their flags out for the veterans that are visiting this weekend too. Um, I think that would be really nice to just honor them and, and kind of thank them. Um, especially the ones, you know, that are driving all the way up from Texas just that to talk about their organization. That is amazing that coming that far. Yeah. 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 It's great. It's pretty wonderful. Yes. Good, good group of people. Did you yeah. talk to Don on Pritchard? On I haven't had a chance. You haven't no. had a chance. To. I know. Scheduling just didn't work out. Oh. Yeah. So. But eventually. <laughs> Well, maybe they can play this enough that. Oh yeah, and I know that we have several ads running, um, pre-recorded that we, you know, we, thirty seconds. Just well, if they heard about it in Alton, it's going out there pretty oh. good. Yeah. <laughs> Last year we had people from eight different states show Isn't up. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yeah. That is wonderful. So. And were most of those people interested in bees to begin with, or? Yeah. Did these they are, just come farther? Well, it was a combination: people that were interested in beekeeping, and then people that just love festivals. And and that oh, just okay. was ready to get out of the house and oh, be, out, yes. be outdoors. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Even had a couple drive from Washington, D.C., which is just crazy oh, my to me. Word. Oh, isn't that some? <laughs> had a commercial beekeeper uh, up from Florida that drove up. Um, he does Tupelo honey. I'm sure you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just uh, amazing people that we meet that come from all over the place. Isn't it's just wonderful. full of knowledge and. I'm just uh, so curious just to pick their brains. Sure. Yeah. Now you need to put a book out. I think we should. It's quite the story. I bet you have a lot of stories to <laughs> tell. Yeah, but we would, I would get off track. <laughs> that's that's be because okay. you need a whole Netflix special. There you go. I, <laughs> I think we could probably fill, I think we could have like multiple seasons. You think so? Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly about chicken pluckers. <laughs> It's fun to do that stuff. <laughs> I mean, if Duck Dynasty could do it, come on, we right. can do it with the bees for sure. Uh. I think so. Yeah, just just follow me a day around town and. Um, <laughs> The other day, I collected a swarm in town, and um, of course they were feisty because I took their queen, mm -hmm. and uh, so I just, I packaged them up and I put them in the back of my SUV and <laughs> driving through town and I've got my bee suit on and there's bees all over my windshield. Like, <laughs> in the and so on the inside, on the inside, right. and people are like. <laughs> pointing and laughing. <laughs> like, just, Hush up or I'll roll the window yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> My joke is this. <laughs> but yeah, it's always an adventure. You, you didn't do a selfie on that one, huh? No, I should have. <laughs> that What's been interesting, been. you got this mask on with the screen, mm -hmm. and you look out and you think, several of those are inside that screen. Oh. Well, yep. You've got a hole back here somewhere. That they mm -hmm. Well, I've learned to like duct tape here. Mm -hmm. Like I bring a, a roll of duct tape with me because yep. bad things have happened. Yep. Yeah. Mm. They can weasel their way in if they're mad enough. <laughs> and they're very smart. They're so going to get you. They're going to get you. Huh? Yeah. They're on a mission. Now, she, yeah. <laughs> she said that this last group was aggressive. You can get queens that will produce a very mild-mannered beehive. Oh, really? And, yeah, and then what the African queen is a very, is that the right species? A Africanized colonies are Africanized, extremely. Africanized colonies. And they will produce a, a bee that really doesn't like you. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have the climate here for that. I, yeah. don't, I don't think they come this far north, you know, Texas. Yeah, they, but they, they can interbreed or whatever, and you have to watch for that. So mm -hmm. you, you buy your queens for various things like hygienics. Mm -hmm. uh, a hygienic uh, bee will help fight off those parasites she's talking about mm -hmm. earlier and help do that and keep the interior of the hive cleaner. So that's a good good quality to have in your bees. Mildness or, or gentleness is another trait you want. Of course you want them together well and produce good honey too, massive mm -hmm. amounts of honey. But there are several traits that you try to get bred into your bee queens. Mm -hmm. And there are specialists that breed queens mm -hmm. for that purpose. Isn't mm -hmm. that wow. they're amazing? Very yeah. good at it. Yeah. Yes. My, my. And you call them grafting queens now, you don't, yeah. They, Not uh, drag queens, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, we weren't going to talk about that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, now, uh, they, uh, it's quite a specialized industry. 
Isn't that amazing, though? And I know one man that has thousands of colonies, and the honey gets in his way. He doesn't care about the honey at all. He's after those queens that he can breed. Mm -hmm. and, to, and that's his business as the queens. Somehow he gets rid of the honey by the barrel. Yeah. But, you know, you have to process the honey to maintain the hives. Right. But, um, you know, that's... He gets rid of it, and I guess he makes a profit at it, but that's not his primary interest. Mm -hmm. So how do they tell, or do you know, how do they tell which queen is? Well, you, you watch that queen? trait. You watch, you you sell that queen to someone, mm -hmm. and then you stay in contact with him and see how that worked out for him. Oh. That's one method. And, of course, at this stage, he's done this for years, and he can see what the crop going into the queen is and then he'll know what the crop coming out of the queen is. Oh, okay. So it's like racehorses. You go by the the heritage of the of the animal in this case mm -hmm. and the results of the animal. Wow. So. And such a tiny little insect. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But it's so critical to our life mm -hmm. with it the pollinization. Is. And mm -hmm. I know when we first started keeping bees that my wife was a massive gardener and our output of our local garden doubled when we brought bees onto the farm. Oh, really? Yeah, it oh. really impact, in, impacted the quality of our garden. Mm -hmm. And most people don't like honey bees because they sting. Well, they're mostly on a mission. First of all, they, don't they, bother they, them. That's right. Right. Yeah, they, they're busy. They won't sting unless they feel threatened for some reason, usually. Just like a snake won't bite unless they feel. Well, I don't know about snakes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just started to say, so the power head typically yeah. isn't aggressive until it feels threatened. Yeah. And that's the way bees are. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, we always just tell the kids to, you see a, a honeybee, just... Keep your hands to your side. Don't yeah. don't swat. Feel free to watch it and, and yeah. learn yeah. how they jump from flower to flower and mm -hmm. all that. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I love watching that and taking mm -hmm. pictures of them when they're I do too. in there. Yeah, it's interesting. It is yeah. fascinating, is the word I use. Yeah, yeah. it is. Just just listening to you <laughs> is <Yeah>. fascinating. <laughs> And the more you learn, yeah. the more you want to know, right. you know. Yeah, this is uh, Greg Hitchings house. that's going to do the bee beard. You can't get him off that subject once he gets going. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, he's there. Well, you know what? That would be good to have somebody ha talk on that. Well, he can do it. Just he, he yeah, he'll be, it. so like, we have an hour set aside for him. Oh, so for him he will be wearing talk. a beard, a bee beard for an hour while talking about beekeeping. Oh and my he would God. love to entertain questions. What time is that? That's at uh, 11 a.m. At, at the stage. At the stage on the, uh, in front of our store. Yeah. Yep. And, and of course we'll have the crowd back a little bit from the bee beard, <laughs> but you know, like 5,000 feet. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, he would be happy to entertain questions. He's very literate in this, so. That is so amazing. That would be frightening to have. His name is Hitchings, her name is Hutchings. You think I don't have problems here? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've saw pictures of it, but I've never seen it in life. Well, I well, mean. Picture, I've seen pictures of people completely covered in their bodies with bees. Okay. Back in the 30s and 40s, I think they used to be done as kind of like a, a carnival sideshow. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Um, oh. Yeah, they would be traveling beekeepers that would just do these elaborate bee beards that would be all over their heads and faces and um, and so that's died out over the years so it's kind of like a lost art there yeah. really is a science to it we like don't know they, if those people were close under that or not <laughs> <laughs> we don't know they how that ended for them totally covered huh <laughs> we hope so Oh my goodness. So from 10 to 6, the event's going to last. 10 to 6, yep. 11 o'clock, you can see the bee beard. The bee beard, yes. And 10, is it till noon, 10 till noon? No. For the bee yeah. beard? No, it, the um, band, the first one. Oh, the band is noon to 3. No, noon till 3. And then 4, and four to 5 30. Five thirty. Yep. And everything's on our Facebook page, social uh, social media, our website. Um, they can find all the information there. And we'll also have maps um, posted all downtown. Um, they can just scan QR code, um, and it'll give them a digital version of the events going on that day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. 
saved us from cutting down trees and handing out paper uh, maps. I think this works. See, my out. most important part of this interview is becoming the post to hold up the sign. <laughs> It's good. Okay, and you guys want to just kind of repeat what you said, <laughs> sure. not totally, but just sure. A so, or um, again, Serenity Supportive Care Program is a free program for the community. Um, those that are suffering with chronic and life threatening illnesses are eligible for the program. It is, um, the services are rendered in the home. It is friendly to have with. Um, home care, home health, physical therapy, occupational therapy, things of that nature because we are not billing. Um, with it being free, we're able to be in addition to whatever care system is already in place to be those extra eyes and ears and support for patients. Um, to be able to be that liaison between patients and their physicians and help navigate the road of whatever this diagnosis is and means for that individual and their family. Um, they receive both social work as well as nursing visits monthly, a minimum of once a month, um, very patient driven. So what the patient needs is what we try to, our, our absolute best to accommodate. And um, for more information on this, just get a hold of Serenity Hospice Care uh, regarding their supportive care program. And we'd be happy to do a consultation or come out and do evaluations, things of that nature. It does not require a physician's um, referral for the program. So if someone is interested in learning more about supportive care and how we can help uh, during that time, they just need to contact us themselves and, and we can set up a time to come meet with them and evaluate and see how we can how So we they can, can search you out on the internet? They can. Um, they can. Are there brochures around? Yes, there are brochures. We have brochures um, all over the place, doctors, hospitals, um, different different places as such, uh, but we can be found on Facebook, and then we do have our website, serenityhospicecare.org, um, and so you can uh, find us there and uh, be able to get some additional information that way. You can submit a request online if you'd rather do it, do it in that form, um, or like I said, just give us a call. You can ask for Whitney, um, and I would be the one to make that initial contact with individuals and um, see what we can do to get them started to, to make it an easier process. The two of you cover all those counties? Yes. Wow. Yes. And you said a while ago that you're uh, no cost. Correct. How, how are you funded? So Serenity is a non-for-profit organization. And um, so Serenity as a whole, you know, receives money federally from mm -hmm. uh, from Medicare and things of that nature okay. and insurances. We uh, receive regular donations and, and things like that from organizations and people throughout the community. Um, and that is that is how we... So if you were to start service at my home, mm -hmm. you would take my insurance information? Only for, it, for, so for supportive care, your insurance information would only be taken so that if there was any kind of lab work that needed to be done, the lab could bill. Okay. But for supportive care, we do not bill. Okay. It is a free program that we offer as a way to give back to the community. Um, we found that folks truly, they just need a little additional support mm -hmm. that comes in the way of some education, another set of, of nurses eyes, and um, that emotional support on getting through whatever mm -hmm. this diagnosis and, and prognosis is, and what that looks like and what that means for them and their family, mm -hmm. so that they are able to to make the most informed decisions um, and have all the confidence and dignity in that decision that they can possibly have versus being told you have to do this. I keep hearing a word encouragement and everything you say. So yes. congratulations, thank you. Well, thank you. We, um, we're quite proud of, of what we're able to accomplish through supportive care and what we're able to give back. Um, it was one of the things that really has it made me decide that I wanted to stay with Serenity. Yeah. Um, being able to give so much back to the community um, is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've been in the communities for over 30 years. Yes. 
we had a different name at first. It was Hospice Care Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And then it became, well, that's kind of a generic phrase. So mm -hmm. we adopted Serenity. And, um, but we've been, been around for a long time. Serenity is the um, oldest, longest acting hospice care in the area. And we've been able to keep our doors open by being just that, providing that encouragement and that hope and love and compassion to people who are struggling with those illnesses and during during the end of their life and being able to provide that to their families. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. It's about helping people live and, and have hope and um, make those memories and, and have that time with their family in the best quality they possibly can. So. Do you go into the care centers and the home uh, also in addition to the home? So for supportive care, we cannot do skilled nursing. So if a patient is receiving skilled nursing care, we cannot provide supportive care to them. Oh, okay. But if um, they're in assisted living, we can do assisted living. Um, and it's, it's truly just one of those fine print federal guidelines right. if they're receiving nursing care that we cannot provide supportive. But assisted living, um, in personal homes, those we can. Okay. But for hospice, definitely we do go into nursing facilities. With the hospice. Yes. 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 Does this yes. take the place of palli uh, palliative care or is this in conjunction to you? So this is very much so like a palliative program. The okay. biggest difference between what we offer with supportive care and a traditional palliative program mm -hmm. is we do not do pain management. Okay. Um, but again, we advocate and we talk with physicians and explain you know, what a patient is experiencing and what those mm -hmm. symptoms look like. Um, and Crystal has built amazing relationships with physicians in the counties that we serve. Yeah. And they trust that she knows what she's talking about. And um, so we're able to, to help advocate okay. on their behalf. That's great. So, yeah. Great. Yep. So we got about five more minutes. So if anybody has anything else they want to. Oh, uh, you're loaded with stories. <laughs> <laughs> <Here another one. laughs> Nothing but just five minutes. Though. <laughs> well, they cut us off at 8.30. Oh, so okay. It's about five or six minutes. So well, if it's OK, I'll share a little bit more sure. about Carter's Clubhouse. Well, sure. uh, so like I said earlier, Carter's Clubhouse is a grief support group for children that we offer. It's a free, another free service to the community. We meet monthly, the first Monday of the month, in Park Hills at the office from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. Kids get dinner, and then after dinner, we do activities and group discussion. Um, and we have a couple of really fun events coming up. One is July 23rd. We have a day camp um, for the children that partake in uh, Carter's Clubhouse, and it's also open to those who maybe don't know about Carter's Clubhouse yet. Um, and so we have a whole day of events plan for the children to come and work on processing some of that grief, learning new coping skills, and then just having fun with each other, just being kids um, without having to worry about what everybody thinks if they're having a hard day. So um, how do they qualify? Does it have to be an immediate family member? It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. We have, we've had children who maybe they've lost an aunt or an uncle okay. that they were just really close to and yep. they don't understand what happened. Mm -hmm. They're having a really hard time grappling that. Yeah. And so um, they're able to come and learn and process and, okay. and work through that. Um, so really the only qualification is they have to be between the ages of four and 18 yeah. and they have to have had a, a loss mm -hmm. um, that, that they're trying to process and, and understand. Mm -hmm. So we have that. And then um, August 13th, I believe it is, it's a, another Saturday, we are doing an art show and Muscatoli dinner fundraiser. And the kids are really excited because their art pieces are going to be on display. They're working on creating art the next couple of, of meetings um, around hope and resiliency and what their journey looks like on canvas. And um, so folks will be able to come in, they'll be able to see the art, they'll be able to learn more about what we're doing at Carter's Clubhouse and have, um, have 
dinner, and then those art pieces are going to be available for bidding for mm -hmm. a week on Facebook um, nice. so that people can have a chance to purchase the art as a fundraiser. So the kids are excited to be a piece of what's happening and, and things, and so it's an exciting time. Yeah. I do have one short story. <laughs> one time, my wife and I were talking to a large group of people, privately, a little social thing, and I started into a long-winded story. I looked at my wife and I said, I'm sorry, Sandy, you've heard this before. She said, go ahead and tell it. It gets so much better every time you tell it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the start at the one end of the room and go to the other mm -hmm. and you have a fabulous story by the time it gets to yeah. the end. It's yeah. totally different than it started. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the name of the game. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So we good. thank both of you, thank you. for being on. Well, thank, thank you, you. for thank having you us. So much. Yeah. And anytime you want to come back, you're more than welcome. I was thoroughly impressed with her presentation and, and what they do for people. Yes. I know. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good thing about this program. Yeah. There are so many good organizations and people that do really good stuff for mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. that people don't even know about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many people watches this, but I know it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it's available by going to 911, uh, not 911, <laughs> 991 <laughs> channel, mm -hmm. and, or just searching for what's new, it'll come up. Oh, or St. Jen TV. Okay. And we've got programs that go all the way back. I think we started in the latter, in June of 2011. He doesn't have them all on yet, mm -hmm. but I found a place where I cut out the paper that we were starting, it was 2011. So we've been doing this for several years. We've had Alzheimer's, we've had just, you guys Everything. have been on before, right. and we've had businesses that opened in town, trying to help them promote their business. I mean, just a variety of things, mm -hmm. uh, very informative. Well, and with supportive care we um we do try to do monthly outreach and we're looking to get started back here in saint genevieve again uh, with being able to provide blood pressure and blood sugar checks once a month uh, we set up for an hour and so we're um, currently in talks with a couple of different locations here in town so that's something to kind of keep an eye out for as well maybe if that's something that you don't have access to um, and we'll have a little card that we can that you come back every month when 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 like when we're present and we keep track of that for you on that card and you have that to show your physicians what kind of what's going on and that's um, great ask more questions about supportive care or hospice mm -hmm. and and figure out how we can help yeah, it we, takes a very special person to do her work yes it does and i'm glad you do what you do i'm glad thank you're you. there and i thank you well, thank you very much i am um, i never thought that Supportive care, hospice care would be where I utilized my social work skills and degree, um, but I absolutely fell in love last year, and I can't imagine doing anything differently. Yeah. Uh, well, you right to come back once a month. <laughs> I think she's probably too busy. <laughs> We'd be glad to have you. Well, I appreciate We'd be glad to have the bees, too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's very interesting. Any time you're welcome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and when you love your job, you put so much more into it. Yeah. 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 You put so much more into it. Oh, sure. And then it's not a job. Yeah, it's not a job. No, it's fun. not at all. It's not, no. it's not, maybe not fun, but it's, okay. it's showing enjoyable. your love or, and care. And, oh, the people you meet are just incredible. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I receive gosh. more from the work oh, that yes. I do than I feel like I give in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And to be welcomed and asked to be with patients and their families in such an intimate time in their life and watch the love that has been grown over generations happen um, is just, it, it will gift. never leave. It is a very big gift yeah. that I've been given in this life and I cherish very much. Mm -hmm. And I know that, uh, that I could speak for the rest of the team at Serenity and say that they feel the same way. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, because I just think when you do work like that, you're just God's angels. Mm -hmm. 
And your bees are too. <laughs> I've even got stories about angels. So. And, we're, and we're gone. So <laughs> now we can say anything we want. <laughs> we might have more interesting stories. Now. <laughs> it's really bad. It's fine. So is it really just a plucker?